We welcome you here to a big night of fights. I'm Joe Tessitore alongside my ringside partner, Teddy Atlas. Looking forward to all the action today, and we're just about set for it. He's making his way down to the ring, and he does so with a confidence where he knows he put all the hard work in, and he's ready to explode inside those ropes. He's had this experience so many times, and success has always come on the back end of these ring walks. It's his focus at this moment that delivers it. Fellas, let's have a good clean fight. Touch them up and let's go. Round one of 12. that punch unable to land that shot he is damaged badly there he may hit the floor he's going around now Teddy like his legs are made out of wet noodles yeah and my mother was boiling the water because she used to make sure that that water boiled and boiled it was never out that tank these legs are not out that tank Comes right back with some offense of his own. He just missed that shot up top. Keeping his hands up, getting way of his opponent's effort. He's showing what a skilled fighter he is with this counterpunching. Nice block that time. It was intended to the head. A target on his head, and he places the hook right on it. Way to block there. Scored well upstairs with the right hand. on the deck in moments. Well, he may be in bad shape, but all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he's able to avoid punches and survive. You know, boxing is a funny business. It's a metaphor for life. You know, sometimes you have somebody outside and they don't say what they want to say. They have to have a drink, a little alcohol to start saying the things that are on their mind. Sometimes a fight is no different. You know, he gets hurt. And now all of a sudden, all his inhibitions are gone. And now he's doing all the things he's supposed to do because he's not thinking about anything except the things he should have been thinking about. It's automatic. Throws a counter punch there. <laughs> Needs to improve that accuracy. Missed with the headshot. Yeah. Hey, Carries hey. that punch away. The end of the round has arrived. 
And now an opportunity for the trainer here to get his hands on his guy. His guy just got tagged pretty good there. And when he looks into his eyes, what is he looking for? Well, first of all, he's looking to see whether or not his guy is still there. You know, he got stunned pretty good. And then what he has to do is make sure his guy's listening to him and telling him, hey, look, you got caught. You've been caught before. This is the way we can fix it. This is what you got to do to correct things. Well, he got caught by a lucky punch in that last round. It did do some damage, but now you can tell he's right back where he wants to be, fresh and ready as we start this round. Oh, and there you go. Oh, he goes down hard, and now he's got a real problem ahead of him. Plenty of time for his opponent to jump on him. So now the question becomes, after that knockdown, and he has gotten up, how does he survive? So one of the ways he survives is if he's been taught, have good habits, have good fundamentals been put there. You're going to find out right now, he needs them right now. A little something for his opponent after getting tagged. Not the most accurate uppercut you'll see. And you can see he wanted to do that as he holds on there. You're doing great. <laughs> he clinches when he gets to the inside. Didn't get it done going to the body there. You know, when we sat with these guys yesterday in preparation for this broadcast, we asked them, all right, what's your favorite punch? They both had the same response. We like them all. Oh, that's a smart fighter, because you want to be as versatile, as rounded as possible. And coming upon the halfway mark of this three-minute round. Good job protecting himself. Turns on that exchange. Covers up nicely, gets rid of his opponent's body shot. Final 10 seconds. Nice block. End of this round. Alongside Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Now they got some work to do here. Their man was just dropped. Yeah, the first thing is you put some cold water. You can't use that. You clear his head, and you tell him why he was dropped. It's okay. It's okay. I need you to move this round, all right? Move. Muevate. I wonder if those 60 seconds were enough, Teddy. He was knocked down in that last round. Now he's right back out there. That 60 seconds has been enough for fighters in his position before. This sport's been around way over 100 years. It's up to him to do the things he needs to do early on in this round. Blocks <laughs> away that headshot. Yourself. 
Marcel. There's the headshot, but he parries it away. Not much action as he just ties up. Left and right, left and right. Well, he's throwing it, but just missed. Isn't landing it. Uppercut! Halfway through this round here. There's yourself! Get out of the way from those punches! Move your head! Boy, if I'm a fan, I'm really liking this because you got a guy who's been down now just going for it, sending all these big power shots after him. But if I'm the opponent, I like it even more. Yeah, you do. That's a good point because you know you only have one punch coming at you at a time. Okay. Usually you have to worry about jabs coming at you, things that are going to set up those punches, those sneaky power punches that you don't have a chance to get away from. Right now, everything's coming from left field. He can see it. the right hand well keep moving get out of there <gasps> relax relax stunned but all of a sudden now surviving <gasps> well you could see what he wanted to do there but unable to land that body shot You're not focusing. return to sender he gives him back one of his own Okay. I need you to use your feet. Move around the ring. You got that? Okay, let's go. You gotta watch the water in the corner. Too much. Keep circling. Don't stand in front of him. Okay, keep boxing. You're doing great. You're making it hard for him to hit you. Start of round four, I was trying to listen in to what was told to him after the third round. Teddy, he trails on your scorecard three rounds to zip. He's throwing a lot of punches, but he needs some better advice. Yeah, well, one of the things that he could be told, and I would tell him, is move after your last punch. Don't stand there and wait for the receipt. You're paying a price. Teddy, based on what we're seeing here early on, I think he was much too amped up for this fight. He came out, he was hyper with the way he was throwing punches, and now he's starting to tire. Yeah, I agree with you, Joe. He started too fast. He threw a lot of punches, but not effective punches. He didn't place those shots, and now he's paying a price. That was off the mark. Good defense upstairs to stay away from that offensive assault. Not able to land the uppercut. a moment here as you see the step back counter punch where you realize this is the sweet science not just some raw savagery swinging out there look at the little subtleties here joe what he does is he forces them into a position to stop the punch and then when he stops steps back makes a miss and comes right back one, one. able to get away from that headshot with the block off the mark Teddy, what advice do you give in a situation like this when you have a fighter 
who's clearly been hurt, who's just looking to hold on and buy himself some time. Well, it's more than just advice. You know, I, I admonish him a little bit. I tell him, hey, listen, I don't want no excuses that he's tying you up. It takes two to tangle. You don't have to get tied up if you don't let him. Don't let him. Take a little step back and create room and let those hands go. You can see he's trying to score up top, but off the mark there. Comes right back with a shot of his own. You see him holding on. Big shot with the left hand. End of the round here on our fight night. Always a good time to come here to this venue. Say, great fans. I mean, wherever we go on our fight night tour, we have great fans. Yeah, passionate fans, fans that know the fighters and care about the sport. You can't just move around. You gotta move your hands in there. Let's go. Don't fight this go. fight. Jab and move. We start a new round here. It's hard to believe that we're even in this round based on how that last round finished. Well, if you ever watched some of those Houdini movies, you know, the great escape artist, kind of hard to believe he got out of some of those fixes he was in. You know, inside that box with chains around him underwater. He's going to have to do a Houdini right here. Well, I don't know if he's hip to the idea of becoming a counter puncher, but I get the sense you'd agree with it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's got the perfect platform, the perfect form for it. The guy's walking in right now, not moving his head. How about that left right there? Taking one. That punch nowhere close. Still plenty of time to work here in round number five. Minute and a half to go. Face yourself. Change, he fires back. A headshot block. Teddy, I'm starting. Oh, he just stayed up. Oh! Well, we know he survived earlier, but now he goes down for a second time. A knockout, unable to beat the count of 10. For the official word, let's send it up to the ring. Now that's how you end a fight right there, yes, he was controlling throughout, but he made a good, clean finish with the knockout. Yeah, as a trainer, you want to know, can a guy punch? Can a guy defend? You know, can a guy control distance? But you want to know, can a guy finish? He got the answer. Yes, he can finish. Yeah, good one for the fans. Glad you tuned in to see it with us. I'm Joe Tessitore.